Julia, thank you so much for joining me uh, yeah. for this chat with uh, for the Coffee Heroes platform. Uh, we are sitting at the Antigua Specialty Coffee place. Uh, we are in Tirana and we will be speaking together about coffee culture in the Balkans, in Albania and about your wonderful journey through, through coffee. And Julia is the founder of Antigua Specialty Coffee and I'm really yeah. excited to welcome you here. Well, same for me. I'm really happy to have you here today. <laughs> So the first question, uh, let's start with the coffee culture here in Albania, in the Balkans. And so how would you describe the coffee culture in the region yeah. Yeah. and in the country? Well, I mean, as for the Balkans, it's really hard to generalize um, just because every Balkan country is very different culturally, especially when it comes to coffee. Um, well, I think one thing that unites them all is usually you go for like dark espressos that is the main um, brewing method mm -hmm. and they are very much like hubs of social gathering um, so in that way um, the the coffee culture is very very similar but then uh, there's a lot that separates them as well I, I think you can tell that the coffee has its unique place in the culture because yeah. I was here for three months and every time I went for a coffee it was full of people, especially in the morning. Yeah. I think that people just gathered to have a quick chat before work. And I find it quite interesting, as you mentioned that the two, two cultures have met, the coffee, two, two coffee cultures have met in Albania, the yeah. Turkish one and the, and Italian, the Italian one. one. Yeah. And mm. it's very unique and also yeah. Mostly I've seen people in cafes that they are having espresso, but so is Turkish coffee something more for home or do you think it's, but that might just my observation, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, our geographical position is also really unique, you know, <laughs> we're between the west and the east and we're just somewhere there in the middle, um, just taking from, from everyone around us. And I think that's beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's so, say predominantly, um, if, it, if you're sitting in a cafe, uh, they they make espressos. Mm -hmm. They usually have an espresso machine, and they don't really experiment a lot with other brewing methods. You can find like uh, very few cafes who brew Turkish coffee, and then at home it's usually Turkish coffee, even though it's part of the older generation's okay. um, ritual. Um, like I said, it's Turkish coffee or the mocha pot. Is there any history about like of specialty coffee in Albania or has it started with, with you, with Antigua? Um, I mean, there definitely like have been attempts to bring sort of a third wave-ish culture, mm -hmm. um, but we are being regarded as the place that sort of um, really, really made an effort to make sure that this is a proper specialty coffee place. Uh, and, you know, we, we did not want to um, just introduce it halfway, but we wanted to go all the way to make sure that this is fully a specialty coffee place in the sense that you can try different specialty coffees, um, buy coffee gear, different brewing methods, you know, really experience um, the, all the variety that there is mm, to, to choose from. And I mean, statistically speaking, we are the only place at the moment that offers, you know, like a V60 or a Chemex, the, okay. the manual filter. That's so. very unique. <laughs> <laughs> but, and so what is like, like, because in some places you can still, I, in some places I, when I ordered cappuccino, it was powdered cappuccino. Yeah. And so what it's like to be the only place that is serving um, specialty coffee or doing the V60, the, yeah, you know, the brew yeah, methods, yeah, while well, in some other places, yeah. You've got this. Well, I, I get very sensitive when speaking about powdered cappuccinos. <laughs> um, just because, well, first of all, I'm proud to say that we are part of the very few cafes here that do not offer powdered cappuccino. Uh, you know, and you can feel how, how much that has affected a, our, our coffee culture. Mm -hmm. That every day I still keep getting people that order, you know, they say, Cappuccino my cafe, which translates to cappuccino with coffee, literally <laughs> translating it. So because they would normally not expect it to be made with fresh, uh, freshly brewed espresso, as um, you know, as paradoxical <laughs> as that yeah. sounds, 
uh, they have to specify to make sure that they're getting a proper cappuccino. Um, and I always jokingly say that, um, you know, I compare it to going to a winery and getting carton wine, basically, you know, so I'm like, don't you worry, we don't have any powders here, it's just freshly brewed coffee. It's a good comparison. I remember any time when I talk about, with somebody about specialty coffee and sometimes you just see like the impression, the reactions about, yeah, on the their reactions faces, those are the best. It's yeah. like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they like it and it, it is rewarding, it can yeah, be. Well, sometimes they won't like it and um, a very funny episode that I, I always recall is that we were hosting a cupping here mm -hmm. um, and I had like some specialty coffees, some very good specialty coffees and at the end of the table we had all the micro lots, the very funky, you know, very uh, special <laughs> micro lots and you know I kept like asking people like how do you find this? Um, and they were very, very, you know, entertained with all of it. They were surprised and um, excited to try all the different coffees. And when it came to the micro lots, they were the least liked coffees. And a woman like described it, like one of the micro lots, as she was like, you know, this really tastes like the juice when you boil your socks. <laughs> uh, that kind of juice. Uh, and, we, and we laughed about it and had a lot of fun, but I always tell people to, first of all, keep an open mind, um, and second of all, uh, just really give it like at least three tries, and then decide if it's not for you. <laughs> exactly, and it's about fun. This yeah, can be fun, yeah. and I, I've drank a lot of <laughs> specialty coffee, yeah. and it sometimes happened to me quite recently, actually, I had some coffee and I the first time I made it, I was like, oh, wow, I'm not really sure if I like it. Yeah, yeah, and then you, you have to give your taste buds the time to adapt. Exactly, right? and <laughs> then like the fourth time I made it, I was like, actually, I, I really like yeah, it. Yeah. So it's a journey, and it, it, it can be a great is. journey too. It is. You, we are right now sitting uh, in front of the decoration that you have on the wall, that it's yeah. explaining the, yeah. the coffee journey and the process. Is it also part of the education apart from being a wonderful decoration but yeah yeah well a lot of people um, do not actually read what it says <laughs> but um, there is people who will you know take the time and put the effort in mm -hmm. to, to read it and because it's such a specific information that it has a specific audience right so uh, you said you met the specialty coffee in the UK? And yeah, so, um, as soon as I like moved to the UK, I started getting more and more exposure to it. But the first year of my university, I joined the, um, you know, the coffee um, society, because there was such a thing there <laughs> as a coffee society. Um, and it's when I actually met and, you know, saw the baristas, the mm -hmm. roasters that you know, it hit me. That sort of was like a, a waking moment for me that coffee can be this thing as well and it can be beautiful and it, it is not just an espresso and it, it is not just a Turkish coffee and it's not just the over-roasted robustas, but it mm -hmm. can be this light, floral, beautiful thing and this multitude um, of way of brewing methods. So it can be a lot of things and it is not just one thing. What sort of challenges does it bring, being, as you said, woman starting her own business in Albania? Was yeah. it hard for you? Or? Well, being a woman here itself already has its own challenges, as you might be aware. Um, and that is not to say that things aren't starting to change, because mm -hmm. I, I like to believe that they are, and we are moving in the right direction. Um, but you know, all sorts of things from you know, getting all of the surprised looks and the patronizing behavior and the uh, disrespect from all of the male business owners, uh, you know, the, the your typical middle-aged male business owner who, that's who you expect to be um, the owner of a business here, right? When you, um, when you think business owner in Albania, you think, 30 to 40 something old um, guy and 
you know, I've had like suppliers here, or people who've come here for meetings, um, and I, I was like there behind the bar brewing coffee, and they've been like, can I meet the owner, please? So uh, it, it is really unusual for them to, to have a young woman um, actually, you know, being all hands-on and running the business at, at the same yeah. time. So do you also manage the roastery and the, the cafe? Do you do you do you both? Do um, you do both? I am planning on it. Mm -hmm. So, um, like one of my resolutions for this year is to learn how to roast, uh, so that we can roast some more, uh, you know, funkier single mm -hmm. origins. And I would like to be part of that, so that you know I can tailor the coffees accordingly. And we do have some very um, exciting ideas for it. Uh, one of them is to, you know, have like sort of a, a collection with some flavor profiles that are reminiscent to flavors that are very common here in Albania, mm -hmm. whether it be your favorite candy from communist Albania or a very traditional dessert. You know, I want to, to highlight those flavor profiles so that people relate to it. And I think it is a um, very good way to to familiarize people with specialty coffee through you know through fami familiar um, notes that that they can relate to. Um, but currently, I am more involved here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, yeah, eventually it'll end up being either fifty-fifty or. Uh, you know, some sort of division that um, <laughs> involves me being part of uh, both the cafe and the roastery. <laughs> Last question. Who is your coffee hero? Because this is a coffee heroes platform, so who is your personal coffee hero? Yeah. Um, well, there is a lot of them, right? Because coffee is such, you know, it's such a big industry. And if you think of the, um, the supply chains, it is so big. So. I mean, on a very personal level, in a mm -hmm. way, my coffee hero is my dad, right? Mm, but then if you think of it, it's like all of the farmers and all of the people at the, at the mills and the, you know, the, yep. the washing stations and every person that takes part in that process is my coffee hero because they are, like without them, honestly, we wouldn't literally have the product in our hands. Everyone who is you know, working to either innovate or improve the livelihoods or of the farmers mm -hmm. or, or, you know, um, just really fight with all the challenges like climate change or, you know, supply shortages. Uh, all of these people who still want coffee to be an ethical product and a great product that can taste amazing, basically. <laughs> uh, and that's the idea behind the Coffee Heroes, because that's what I wanted to do as well, yeah. just to highlight the stories of all the people working within the specialty coffee that brings bring it to our table, actually. Because there's so many like unheard stories of there people. Is, there is so many players that contribute to it. Exactly. Uh, so, Julia, thank you so much. No, uh, thank you. It was a lovely chat. and lovely cafe as well i really enjoyed so my two visits here <laughs> and i hope that there will be more to hear from you and that you know the specialty coffee scene in albania will really kick off and <laughs> go in the right direction yeah i mean thank you for you know putting the time and effort to first of all like find me <laughs> and come here and you know for your curiosity as well um, to learn more about it and we we need to have more of these conversations so it, thank you for doing that it's a pleasure i <laughs> and your story is also very very interesting <laughs> thank you like being involved in coffee from your birth that's yeah that's unique <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much